Hi and welcome to our today's installation and commissioning video about our new storage solution, the Fronius Reserva. For the Fronius Reserva, you have the possibility to manage your own system with your battery modules as well as with your battery management unit. Please note that for all batteries, you always have two, three, four or five numbers of modules per system, depending on how much energy you want to gain with your battery. And per tower, you always have one battery management unit that is placed in the bigger box. Please note that even when you're installing multiple battery towers to each other, so you can place up to four reservas in parallel, please note that you always need to have the same number of modules within each tower and to have at least one battery management unit per tower. So first up, let's start with the installation process and adding up the modules to each other. The first step is to take the floor stand out of the box where the battery management unit is inside. So please make sure to place the floor stand horizontal on the wall and with these little screws on the outside of the floor stand you can make sure that this is nice and leveled to the floor. After that you can start with adding up the battery modules to the floor stand. Please make sure to always align the left and the right side correct since on the left side there is the DC plug as well as the mechanical bottoms to connect the battery modules to each other. To fix the modules to each other there are mechanical components on the side of the reserva that can be placed with a Torx 30 and to install it with newtometers of 5. To fix the battery to the wall and avoid it from tilting, please make sure to use the scope of delivery wall mounting system. With this wall mounting system you will find some mechanical screws to screw it to the wall as well as a wall mounting system that, you can, that can be placed to the battery module and be connected to the wall. Please make sure to connect at least every two modules to the wall. Depending on how many modules you install per system, you have the choice between two up to five modules and on the last module you place the battery management unit on top and screw it down the same way as you did with the modules. Please note that you need to do the mechanical screwing of the modules on both sides. So after screwing one side, please make sure to also fix the second side. To finalize the installation, please use a 5 newton meter torque. After the initial installation of the battery modules, we now want to start to do our DC connection part. First of all, if ever you want to connect the hybrid inverter with the Fronius Reserva, please make sure to use the two DC plugs DC1 plus and DC1 minus. To connect these, please make sure to disconnect the plastic covers from the DC connection. To do so, please only use the X-Factory tools, the Amphenol DC connection parts, to do the DC connection on the battery. Please make sure to not use other DC connectors like MC4 or Stäubli to make sure to have the same type of DC connectors on the Fronius Reserva battery. Regarding the DC connection of the battery, please note that we start with the Amphenol DC connectors. However, from Fall 2025 we will start with MC4 Stäubli Evo Store connectors so that you have a standard DC connection port with MC4. Whenever you want to install one single hybrid inverter to one single battery tower you can do this by using the DC1 plus and DC1 minus. Whenever you want to install multiple battery towers for a parallel connection you can do this by using the DC 
two plus and DC two minus plug and therefore directly connect multiple battery towers in parallel without the need of a DC combiner box. To do the DC installation on the reserver you will find in scope of delivery an Amphenol DC tool with that you can do the DC connection. For the data communication part we want to use our Ethernet socket with the naming inverter. And on this Ethernet socket you can directly install an Ethernet cable coming from the Phonius reserver directly to your Phonius inverter. Please note, for extra installation efforts you can use the scope of delivery Ethernet socket and with this Ethernet socket you have an extra protection against water on the Ethernet side. To do the PE connection, the protective earth connection to the Phonius server, you can use the PE lug on the right side of the connection area and with the help of a cable lug you can install it to the Phonius server. For the parallel connection of multiple towers, we also need to have an Ethernet connection between the towers for data communication and therefore we have our in and out plugs with Ethernet sockets. To open these you can remove the cover and beneath that you have an end resistance as an Ethernet socket open in the battery. And please note that whenever you install a parallel connection you can now use an Ethernet socket to connect the multiple batteries with each other. However, please note, when you are not using a parallel connection, then this end resistor needs to be plugged in and the cover of the in and out ports need to be closed. Last but not least, the Fronius server has a so-called service plug up here, but please note, for now there is no functionality, so you can ignore this connector. After the installation process we now want to install the side covers and therefore please note that there are always right side and left side written down on the panels and we start by installing the first panel of the floor mount of the battery. So in this case we are starting with the right hand side of the battery and we start with the right side cover. Same thing goes for the module covers. There, yeah, please watch to always have in our case now the right side on top. So we are using this panel with the right side naming on top and then we install it to the first module. After that you are starting with the rest of the modules. So depending on how many modules you have, you are placing the module covers on the right hand side always with the naming right side on top. Same thing goes for the left side of the battery. Therefore, please choose first up the ground stand cover and now it says left side on top. So therefore, please make sure to first install the left side cover for the ground stand. After that step, you are installing the rest of the covers on the left hand side of the battery modules and therefore, please note that left side is naming on the top of the cover. For the last step before installing the side covers of the battery management system, please note to first up install the top cover of the battery system by noting that these little noses here are on the back side of the battery management system and after that you can just move it from the left side to the right side and install it to these little noses that are on the top of the battery system. Last but not least we install the left and right hand side cover of the battery management system and therefore we have one bigger module with a, with a hole in the middle and this is installed to the left side of the battery module whereas the other module is installed to the right side to cover the cable. After installing the last cover for the connection area, now the cabling is on the back side of the reserver and now it is protected against mechanical harm. After the finish of the installation of the Phonius server, we now want to cable the data communication as well as the DC connection to the Phonius hybrid inverter. Therefore, please note, depending on which Ethernet socket, which Ethernet cable you are using, either T568B or A, so the European or Amer American standard, 
please make sure to either use the orange and orange white cable or the green and green white cable from the Ethernet cable to install it to our Modbus Zero Plus and Modbus Zero Minus cable on the Modbus connector of the pilot device. Together with the Voltage Plus signal as well as the ground contactor, you can now cable the data communication to the phone user server and to the Gen24 Plus inverter. After that, please also note to use the shielding of the cable and unisolate it on one side, in this case on the inverter, and use our shield contactor on the Modbus plug to make sure that the shielding of the cable is grounded on one side of the cable. Furthermore, we also want to install the Phonius smart meter at the feeding point so that the battery can be controlled correctly. Therefore, please make sure to use the M1 plus as well as the M1 minus contactor as well as the ground contactor and then install it on one hand side on the Phonius inverter and on the other hand side on the Phonius smart meter and depending on which smart meter you are using so either the 100 amp single phase 63 amp single phase or the smart meter IP for example you have different contactors on the smart meter which you can see in the schematic that is now online. Please note for the data communication we also need to make sure that for our Modbus communication the termination resistance is set correctly depending on the setup of the whole system. That means for the Phonius server the termination resistance 120 ohm is always X factory set to on position. For the inverter you can choose that with our dip switches so please set the dip switch correctly to on position whenever you install for example the Phonius server to the Gen24 only. Same thing goes for the Fonio smart meter, so depending on the position, please set the termination resistance correctly. Furthermore, we also want to connect the DC communication, the DC cable to the inverter, and therefore you find an extra contact on the hybrid inverter. It is called BAT, so for battery connection, and there you can directly connect the DC plus and DC minus cable coming from the Fonio server directly to the Fonio hybrid inverter. For the last part we now want to start up the battery storage and therefore we first off activate the battery storage with the main switch and with the on contactor and afterwards we want to switch on the inverter on the AC side and last step is to activate the inverter over the DC switch on the DC side. To activate the battery please open up the cover of the main switch with the two screws here, open up the cover and then activate the main switch on the battery. After that close down the battery cover again and press one single press on the start button to activate the battery system. The battery will then drive up and will start itself and you can see that by the flashing LED, by the flashing status LED side on the left side. And then when the Phonius server is started up and the inverter will start to discharge or charge it, you will see it instantly on the LED status. The first mode is the idle mode of the battery where it is in idle or it is discharging the battery. In both cases the LEDs are just at a constant light and in our case with the free LEDs that means that we are at the state of charge between 50 and 75 percent. So this will indicate you the direct state of charge. After the installation process of the Phonius Reserve and the Gen24 Hybrid Inverter, please note that you need to update the Phonius Inverter to the version 1.36.1-2 to make sure that you can choose the Phonius Reserve from the compatible components in the components page of the web interface. After this update you can now choose the Phonius Reserve as a component. Next up you start the inverter on the AC side so please switch on the inverter AC sided and then open the web interface to connect to the web interface of your Phonius hybrid inverter. How you do this you will find in our how to video on how to connect to the web interface. After entering the web interface of the inverter please log in with your technician account. Please note that only technicians can do this. After that on the left hand side you will find the settings of the inverter and there you can click on device configuration. After that you click in the point components. Here under components you at least need to add up a primary meter so that the Phonius server gets data from the hybrid inverter. 
After that, you can add a new component and here you can add up your new Fronio reservoir battery by clicking on battery. After that, you are choosing the type of battery that you want to install, in our case, the Fronius Reserva. And with that, you can add up the initial commissioning of the Fronius Reserva. Please note also for the SOC limit mode, there is always X Factory set to automatic. Please note that this is the perfect setup for the battery management system to work efficiently. So we recommend you to leave this on automatic. Furthermore, you can also add a battery charging from other sources. So that means when you have an existing AC source within a system, so let's say a second inverter or another generator, you can always opt out from other generators in the home network or extra to that also from the public grid. All you need to do then is to put in the AC generator that is in the network. So let's assume we have a six kilowatt AC output power inverter within that system and we add this to our system. This is all you need to know about the commissioning of the Fronius Reserva. At the end, please hit the save button to save the new settings. And with that, the Fronius Reserva is fixed and finished, installed and commissioned. And when you have finished the commissioning process of the Fronius Inverter, please next up do the firmware update on the Fronius Reserva. This is really important that you can guarantee a correct operation of the Fronius Reserva. For that, please go into your Fronio SolarWeb account, go under Settings and Components and there you will find the data source Fronius Reserva. As you can see here, you can now click on the right hand side to update the firmware version of the Fronius Reserva. So to make sure that you have all the functionalities needed and the correct operation of the battery system. After this commissioning process, you are fixed and finished with installation of the Fronius Reserva. As you see, there is no other commissioning needed with the Fronius Reserva. All you need to do is to add this component in your inverter and you are fixed and finished with the installation process. So this is all you need to know about the installation and commissioning. I hope you will have a good time installing our new and easy Fronius Reserva solution and we'll have lots of fun with the commissioning that is very easily done. I wish you all the best of that. And until the next time here at Phonius, see you and goodbye.